In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the newly updated Studio One remote app. Now, I'm going to be using an iPad for this demonstration, but it's available on uh, iPad in addition to tablet. So regardless of which operating system that you're running. Okay, so before we get started, a little disclaimer. I generally don't use iOS apps for really anything in terms of control surfaces. I happen to find them a little bit awkward. I have very big hands. I find that it's hard to get the right angle and it's hard to get the right ergonomic setup. I work with a FATA port 16. I've had one for a very long time and I have a hardware monitor controller. Everything that I need to touch, it's directly in front of me. I have actual knobs, actual faders. And at the most, I might also work with a FATA port 16 and a console one if I'm mixing with console one because they work in tandem together really nicely. So as opposed to running the Studio One remote app as something where I'm using faders and I'm using the transport, that is not my intended purpose for this video. For this video, I just wanna take a look at basically the surround panner and the object bed panner and seeing how they function together and also seeing how they function together with an existing control surface. In this case, it's a fader port 16, but anything that I'm talking about in this video could easily be applied to a fader port eight as well. And I guess to an extent, even a single channel fader port. I think it's the 2018 model or whatever they call it. So what are we looking at here? Well, I have a surround panner that's opened up for this track over here. First of all, I wanna talk about fader port 16. Even though my focus, I really want this to be about the Studio One remote app, it's worth mentioning that in, in our basic pan mode with the fader port 16, as long as I have the, the track selected and as long as I click my fader port in pan mode, then I have very basic control over, for example, left to right. And the swing of the left to right will actually, if you take a look at the direction, we have minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees. So this depends on whether you wanna have something kind of in between, we would be, our direction would be 126.9. And if I was in the other direction, it would be where over here, minus 126.9. So I do have that basic control in terms of panning and I can hold shift and I can select the fader to reset the panning. Now in terms of the iPad app, this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's a little bit different in terms of where we click. We click the top of the arrow and as long as you kind of pull it out, make sure that you're not pulling the room in like this right over here, then you will have the same ability to kind of swing this in either direction. But Notice that it doesn't stop over here, that I can kind of swing it back. Whereas on the fader port, I am limited in terms of the direction. If I go this way, then I can't go any further. And if I go this way, then I can't go any further. So if I wanted to go further than the other area, I have to pull it back the entire direction. Whereas on the iPad app, notice that the direction panner is changing from minus 178 to like plus 178 because I can toggle that. So that I find useful. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool about this is that if I wanted to make a panning adjustment and adjust the size, if I tried to do that on the fader port, I would have to adjust both of these parameters. I'd have to kind of pull this in and then adjust the size, or I could click, hold, and drag over here and notice that I'm increasing the size as I'm pulling this in. We can see how this is being dispersed into different speakers. So we can do a lot of this stuff with a mouse, but what I kind of like with this setup is that on the fader port, at least at the time that I'm doing this video, if I wanted to adjust maybe the panning, but I also wanted to adjust the vertical height, there's no way for me to do this with just this control surface. I can click this little height parameter and I can adjust that here. So if we're playing this, I can adjust this and then I can adjust this fader. But on the actual iPad app, I could be adjusting the elevation parameter. First of all, let's reset this. I'm gonna hold down. Oh, another thing, this is another thing that's kind of cool with the iPad app is that if you wanna reset things, it's just double clicking the direction here, double clicking the spread, for example. Um, I'm going to just uh, command click this just over here to bring this back to its default state. So if I wanted to adjust the panning, and bring this over a little bit to the right, but I also wanted to adjust the elevation. I can do both of these at the same time. It does take a little bit of getting used to, and I do find that the, that the elevation sensitivity on the iPad app, it's a little, the throw is a lot shorter than I would have expected. Like if I move, the throw is basically equal to where it is on the iPad, but what I would rather have 
is the throw be equal to if I'm click holding and dragging that I could go to the very top of the screen and it would be slower because this dials up pretty fast. Like that's probably about a two or three inch movement for me. But either way, that's cool because we can adjust the actual panning like this and we can also be adjusting the elevation and these, these now work together. Another cool thing with respect to working with, let's just call it the Studio One remote app, in addition to having a control surface, is having the ability to adjust the panning of two different tracks at once. And specifically, I guess I should say, maybe with respect to automation. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that I have the solo fall selection option uh, enabled. I usually work with this by default. It's kind of annoying unless you want to have that behavior, which sometimes I do. I just turn it off when I don't need it. But this means that any track that I have soloed, if, if I'm in solo mode and I select another track, it'll automatically solo. That is good sometimes, and sometimes it's a bit of a pain, but I just wanted to make note of that's how I have this running in this video. Now, the other thing, and I think this has to do with the preference of the channel editor in Studio One, but as I move through and select a different channel, notice that if you have a panner open, whether this is an object panner or a surround panner, that the focus will automatically follow this, just like this. Now, notice this is also happening in the iPad app because that is a default behavior. But one of the things that I do like is let's say that I wanted to have both of these tracks soloed. And let's say that on the fader port, I want to be controlling the panning of the piano right over here. And let's say that I want to be able to adjust the panning in addition to the height. So I wanna use the fader port to adjust the panning. Actually, let's temporarily just solo the piano track. I'm using the fader port. So this allows me to adjust the basic panning if I needed to pull this in a bit, I could pull this in using the iPad. But the other thing is I can now adjust the elevation by clicking the elevation in the actual iPad. So this is one area where we can kind of fine tune this and get this sitting exactly where we want. Now, another scenario would be that we have both of these selected. And let's say that I want to have the track focus in Studio One be on this panner. And even it doesn't have to be the fader port. Maybe I'm even just using my mouse and I'm, I'm, I'm dragging some of these coordinates around. But the other thing that I could do is I'm going to click the console option in the remote control app. And now I'm going to open up this panner just by clicking the panner. So now what we have is two tracks soloed. And now I can adjust both of these together. And whether I'm doing this with a mouse or a fader port is kind of doesn't matter. But let's say that I also wanted to adjust the panning of these. I could put this one into touch mode over here. I could put this one into touch mode right over here. And now any movements that I do for both of these, these are going to be happening and these are going to be automated in real time. So if I push play, Whoops, I was accidentally on level there. Let's redo that again. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in pan mode on the fader port and let's do that one more time. And then obviously there are some major advantages in terms of using the actual Studio One remote is that things like this, if you ever wanted to do any automation like that or anything really, that we can do it very easily on the remote app. And truthfully, like I said, this is something that we could also do if, let's go back into read mode here. This is something that we could do if we were actually mouse clicking this panner over here. But I do like the idea of being able to adjust multiple parameters at the same time uh, from within one panner, like having access to the height and things like that while making other panning adjustments or any movements that we need with the panner. Other things that I like about using the Studio One remote app, I like the double tap, double tapping direction, for example, and that will reset this right over here. Uh, if I had the size increased or anything like that, notice that this is pulling that center arrow back and it's dispersing these. If I wanted to reset this, double tapping this, same thing with the spread over here, double tap to reset. Um, disable center and adjusting the center level and things like adjusting the LFE. 
those can be done pretty much just as easily from the actual uh, plugin GUI. So I don't really see it as being a massive benefit, but you know, it's kind of one of these things where I can single click or I can command click to reset a parameter to its default and I can single click this. But if you have this and you're getting accustomed to working this way and you're getting accustomed to using this panner, for example, the other thing is we don't necessarily have to have that panner open. I can be adjusting this panner and I'm seeing the full width, which is saving me some screen real estate over here. So in the case where I don't want to have anything open, maybe I have some other things that are open and I need to be able to see things clearly. Like if I wanted to have this plugin open, if I wanted to be taking a look at my renderer, but actually playing this and adjusting the panning, that's something that I can do just by having the Studio One Remote app open, but I don't have to have that actual panner, which is taking room in my Studio One GUI, and it's occupying that space over there. So all in all, how will I be using this? Well, I think at the end of the day that I'm going to try to see if I can fit this into my workflow. I do know that I want to use my fader port for a lot of things. I also know that there are certain things that the fader port doesn't necessarily do well. For example, if I wanted to be adjusting the panning or the balance of something, that this is a really nice way to be able to do this in, in the iPad. It's just, just being able to click, hold, and drag this while you're automating. And like I say, I don't always have to have this panning GUI open. I might just want to have the track selected just like this and then come in and choose any track. Maybe I have multiple tracks soloed together. So maybe I'm listening to the pianos and the percussion. And I want to adjust the panning of the piano. Well, this is automated over here. Maybe another better example would be something like the background vocals. So we'll go back here and let's go to the background vocals. We'll open up this panner and now I could adjust these. So it just gives me another level of control. I think as long as I'm working with a laptop stand and I have it a little bit on an angle so that I can see it and there's no glare, and that it's something that's kind of comfortable for my hand, I have to get used to using my left hand though because my mouse hand is my right hand. And obviously my right hand is also controlling the transport controls of the fader port. And for the most part, I use the right hand for levels and stuff like that, especially if I'm in the level mode or the pan mode on the fader port. But I definitely think I'm going to give this a chance. I really haven't even looked into third-party surround panners or what's compatible with Studio One. It's been a long time since I've worked in any surround mode. So this is all kind of like, I wouldn't say new, but I'm revisiting all of these topics. And the last time I had done any research on anything like that, it was probably close to nine years ago in terms of the last time I was working with 5.1 or anything like that. So hope this video is useful. It's a no brainer here. The Studio One Remote app, it's a free download and it, it'll run in, in a tablet, either iOS device or Android device. So download it, give it a shot, and you might even find that it's something that also can act as a control surface. If you don't have access to a fader port 8 or fader port 16 or anything, you might find that you're quite happy using these faders here. For me, uh, it, it would take quite a lot to get used to, but definitely for the surround panner and the object panner, I'm going to try to give this a shot. Also, I will do an update video as soon as I kind of iron things out and have my workflow ironed out a little bit better. I'll definitely do an update as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.